All right, guys. Um, Josh here. I am just. Oh boy. Um, this is kind of a quick follow up to last night. Uh, kind of doing this on the spot. Um, I said yesterday that I felt, if I felt that the info that we got both after we were done recording on this night and today was substantial enough that I would do something quick. Um, this is just going to be like a quick 20, 25 minute thing. Um, wanted to share some, share some thoughts on the, uh, on the Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy departures and also on, uh, the Jason Schreier piece over on Bloomberg, um, talking about the future of Bungie and talking about, um, what Project Payback was supposed to be. Um, so we talked last night um, in the last 15, 20 minutes of the episode about uh, Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy are no longer at Bungie. Um, at the time it was being reported that they were a part of the uh, layoffs this week um, over at Bungie as some of the executive departures. Uh, it is now coming out. Uh, Jeff Grubb clarified last night, but it was after we'd already recorded and after, uh, in fact, I think it actually was after the episode was posted. Uh, came out and said, hey, I need to offer a quick clarification. And uh, they didn't actually get let go. Uh, they they reached their own agreement or left voluntarily or, you know, something like that. And that's basically the info that we got. Um, I don't know. To me, it still feels like uh, it feels like it was probably a choice of, well, you can either go voluntarily or we're going to get rid of you. Um I, I talked to somebody who works in games, and he was like, well, if they were fired, if those two specifically were fired, that could be uh, lawsuit territory. Um, I don't know under what grounds. Uh, we didn't really get a chance to talk about it too much. It was well after midnight when I was talking to this uh, this person last night. But um, I, I, don't, I don't know what grounds that would be actionable on. Like, you know... Uh, unjust firing or whatever. Um, regardless, lo losing losing Luke and Mark as the long term stewards of the franchise is pretty alarming to me. Um, and uh, you should, Jason's piece, which uh, we're going to go into here in a minute, does talk a bit about what those guys uh, had been working on. Um, I got asked last night in the Discord what uh, what what is uh, what what does what was Luke doing on a day-to-day -day basis? And uh, the the best way I can sum this up is Luke was basically overseeing the entire franchise. He was the executive creative director. Uh, what does that mean? That means that he was, he was basically overseeing all the big story decisions, any big beats. Him and Mark were basically supposed to be less involved with the game and more taking on the multimedia side is what I gathered, or like overseeing other projects that would spin up, uh, Payback being one of those. Um... And I, I find that really interesting. I know that, you know, a lot of us haven't seen, we haven't seen Luke for a while. You know, he, he's become very quiet. And I think it's because, you know, kind of heads down working. Now that he was working at least in incubation on a new game set in the universe is really frustrating. Um, Tocom came out and was talking about this last night. It was like, this, this is a blow. Like, this, this is a loss. Um, and I want to want to read I want to read exactly what Tocom uh, was tweeting out. Um, for for those who don't know, uh, Tocom works on the marathon team over at Bungie, and previously was the combat design lead uh, on Destiny. But um, he he was tweeting out last night um, about this, saying Luke and Mark were instrumental in every banger release we've ever had. That dynamic duo moved mountains for this game. For many of us, Luke was a friend and a mentor who championed the game and the hobby. He always wanted to make sure we honored the time folks spent in our world. That is that is maybe the most critical thing you can say about a creative director or like a game director, a lead, like is that they want more than anything to respect the time that players are investing into the world. I, I shared this last I talked about this last night a little bit. Luke's anecdotes about the time around Curse of Osiris have stuck with me for a long time. There's some of the more, more some of the more poignant comments I've heard about game dev um, in you know my years covering covering games and doing podcasts and whatnot. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody be so frank and be like, I didn't know if our studio was going to exist. I didn't know if Destiny Two was going to exist 
because Curse of Osiris is so bad. He's like, it was so bad. We missed the mark so bad. Players hated it so much. He's getting death threats, things like that. He didn't know if he was going to continue working in games. And out of that, we end up getting Forsaken. Um, and of course, you know, Luke, Luke got elevated to um, creative lead for the franchise um, shortly after Beyond Light came out. It was pretty much right after Beyond Light came out. Uh, Joe Blackburn took his old place as the game director. Um, and Luke and Mark were elevated. This is really frustrating. This is really frustrating to me because I understand, and I, I guess we should probably get into the we should probably get into the Schreier article because I think that it really ties in with what I'm trying to say here about what a loss Luke and Mark are for this for this uh, franchise. Um, I'm gonna kind of skip around in the uh, in the Schreier article. I wanna. I want to go straight to payback. I want to go straight to payback before we talk about like the larger Bungie part of this. Um, one of Benji's biggest bets was payback, an incubation project set in the Destiny universe that would shake up the formula in major ways, according to people familiar. It would pivot from a first person to a third person perspective and allow players to use the franchise's characters to explore a large world while cooperating to battle monsters and solve puzzles. This pitch took elements from popular games such as Warframe and Genshin Impact. Although sem several internet rumors over the last few months have suggested Payback would be a sequel to Destiny 2, it was a significant departure from the previous two games, according to the people familiar, and would have been perceived more as a spin-off. But two months ago, Bungie canceled Payback to prioritize games that were more imminent, moving the bulk of its team to Marathon, which is targeting a 2025 release. All right, I want to I want to I want to focus on that right now because. This is this is the game that uh, Grub was reporting that Luke and Mark were directly overseeing. I don't know if one of them had stepped in to maybe be the game director or to be you know maybe one of the project leads on it. I would imagine they had pretty significant input in this. We we kind of discussed this with Marathon, right? We we've said this a few times, like you know if anybody can take a uh, take you know, uh, a shooter trope or take a type of game that maybe isn't perceived as like a household thing and make it a household thing, it's Bungie, you know, the Bungie magic, which we're going to talk, we're going to talk about Bungie magic here in a little bit, but, um, you know, there's always this element of, damn, they really cooked here. And unfortunately, <laughs> uh, that's not what's happening here. That it it is really unfortunate. That's not what's happening here. Um, I I I'm not alone on this island, but I feel like I feel like the island is sparsely populated. Of I kind of would have been okay with a game like this. Um, I've been pretty clear about not liking games like Warframe and First Descendant. Um, in the past, uh, those games, kinds of games just don't appeal to me. And part of that's because I don't give a shit about those universes. But you're going to set a game that I really like in a universe like that? Yeah, I'm kind of interested. I'm kind of interested in that. I'm not I'm not going to lie. Like, we talk about how, like, they wanted to grow the franchise and they wanted other projects. I have to, I, I have to wonder what Sony thinks about this, because I would think Sony was probably on board with this. Um, they would be another revenue source for them. Now, I, I do want to say, I, I know that hearing the words Genshin Impact really scares a lot of people because that is very much a gotcha game. If you could have figured out how to do this type of game without it being a gotcha game, I would have been okay. In fact, my pitch for this actually is, the way they're saying this, it almost, it almost sounds more like a Destiny version of Monster Hunter is what they wanted, which... I would have been totally cool with if you want to give me Destiny Monster Hunter, give me a Destiny game that's Monster Hunter esque, set it during the Great Ahamkara Hunt, or set during uh, the Dark Age or the beginning of the City Age. Maybe a game that culminates in Twilight Gap or Six Fronts. Like there are so many cool things you could have done. The Assault on the Moon, yeah, the Great the Great Disaster on the Moon. You know, you play as Eris' as Fire Team. There are so many cool stories you could tell here. I think. And I would have really loved to have seen something like that. I, I really, truly would have loved that. Um, to me, that's kind of how I'm taking this pitch. Um, I, I joked, with, we were joking in the, uh, we were joking in Discord earlier. I think Shade Slayer was the one saying it, saying, uh, oh, so it's, it, it's like Warframe, but good, essentially. And I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I go that far. I, I know I was, I was joking about it too. I don't know if I'd necessarily go that far, but um, yeah, that's basically what 
That's basically what I'm thinking. Is Warframe, but good. Um, you know, an open-world version of Destiny with the ability to play as your favorite characters would be great. We've seen how big First Descendant is. Imagine how cool it would be with a franchise you already know and love. That's kind of the approach I'm taking here. Like, I, I actually think this would have been a cool idea. I feel like this would have been a game that probably would have been geared more towards or could have been geared more towards mobile, but I think that's really hard not to make that a gotcha at that point. Also, like, I don't know. I like the idea of this. I would welcome something like this, or, like, uh, a game that's, like, similar to Diablo set in the Destiny universe. Like, I, a dungeon crawler, like, I would welcome games like that. I think that the gameplay loop would be really fun. The whole point of growing a franchise and growing a universe is you experiment with different kinds of games. And I think you've gotten to that point with Destiny where you could pretty easily do that. Um, that being said, it's clear Bungie didn't want to move forward with that for some reason. Um, and so we now know of at least two of the projects that were in incubation. This and Gummy Bears. Gummy Bears is... Funny enough, Gummy Bears is the one being spun off, and I think it's because it's a new franchise, and it's not like, oh, this is Destiny adjacent or something like that. I think that's the entire point of spinning it off is this is a new franchise. We don't have to worry about it. Uh, we don't have to worry about like maybe the negative connotation of Destiny with some players out there. But I just can't help but feel that like doing multiplayer only games is just not a viable path right now. You need to be focusing on something that can be played as a single player game that is not always online with the option to do stuff with your friends. And I think something like that, like if you had basically been Destiny Monster Hunter, I think could have gone over really well because something like Monster Hunter World, you can play by yourself or you can bring your friends in. I think something like that would have actually been super cool. A bun the Bungie take on Monster Hunter sounds like an awesome proposition to me personally. I re I really like the idea of that, and you could easily do that as like, oh, here's a this is a single player game, and you know, hey, maybe we'll do we'll do some like free updates, and maybe we do a big expansion or two, and then you know we move on to something else. You have to have more of these types of games that maybe don't eat up all your resources for years on end. Destiny 2 has become a very expensive game to maintain. Um, going going back into the Schreier article, um, I, I want to talk a little bit about some of the other some of the other projects that they had here at one point. Um, one of the other things that they had in here, um, and I, I want to make sure I get the exact line here uh do, 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 do. in early 2022 during an era of low interest rates and strong post-covid sales across the industry sony purchased bungie for 3.6 billion dollars looking at destiny 2 as a model for its growing ambitions and live service games flush with cash bungie hired hundreds of staff members and pursued myriad incubation projects including mobile versions of destiny remakes of old games and new franchises so let's pause there mobile version of destiny this was rumored for years and i Kind of was like, I, I've said publicly in this show, I did not ever think that was a real thing. I think the speculation was that was part of the partnership they had with NetEase from like back in 2018 or 2019 was working on a mobile version of Destiny. Now that 100% would have been a gotcha game. That would have absolutely been a gotcha game. And I just don't know how you would have sustained that. When I look at remakes of old games, I have to wonder what that would have been like. Because that would have either been you remaking the Marathon series or you remaking Oni, essentially. Those are those are the games that come to mind for me that they could have possibly tackled. Um, I don't know if Rockstar would have had to play ball on Oni. Um, but you know, you you look at games that they have made that they made before this. Um, oh, you had. I mean, you also had Myth. You probably could have remade Myth. I just, I don't know how Myth would have gone over. Um, that's, you know, that that's, an, uh, it's, it's, a, uh, it's an RTS style game. Uh, I don't know how that would have gone over if you remake that. But um, yeah, I would have, I would have been fascinated if they would have done Myth. Um, but I believe they only made Myth 1 and 2. They did not, they didn't make 3. Um... Okay, and so I'm, I'm actually doing a little bit of reading here. Uh, Take Two actually owns the rights for Oni and Myth. Um, 
So they probably would have had to play game there. They probably would have had to play ball. I, I wonder if Sony would have done that. I feel like maybe those projects would have had a better chance at being done. Oni, I, I suspect Oni was the remake. I, I'm going to say that right now. I think Oni was the remake here. Um, I would imagine maybe OG Marathon was a thought. But I think that remaking the marathon games probably would have been confusing with a new marathon coming out. Um, that's just that's my personal take on it. I have no basis for that. That is my own personal interpretation here. Um, <laughs> I don't think they're going to go all the way back to uh, Minotaur Labyrinths of Crete. Personally, um, I don't. I don't think we're going all the way back there. But. Yeah, there are there are things that they they could have done. And then when we talk about those new incubation projects, um, new franchises, obviously, uh, Gummy Bears was one of them. We know at one point they were working on a single player action adventure game um, that was found in a job listing. And that was that was a couple years back. That was that was in 2021, 2022 ish is when we saw that listing surface. Um, And I never really saw it get beyond there, but it was for an incubation team. And I don't, I don't think that ever really progressed anywhere. Um, I remember when I was talked about, I was like, man, I would really love to see them do something that's not an FPS, because Bungie has been FPS for like twenty something years. I think you have to, you do have to legit go back to like Myth and Oni to find a time they weren't doing FPSs. I mean, we remember Halo was originally supposed to be an RTS, and it only changed to an FPS once Microsoft bought them and was like, we need a game for the Xbox. Um. I I do wonder what those projects were, and I'm sure we'll get details down the line. If not, <laughs> Jason, we need you to write another. We need you to write another tell all about Bungie. Um, but I mean, it, it's staggering here because that would mean that you had Destiny Two, you had the Marathon remake, you had a mobile version of Destiny in development. We don't know when Payback went into development. I, I have no idea when that did, but at one point you had Payback. And then you had Gummy Bears. That's at least five projects right there. You had the uh, single-player game that was in Incubation. And if you're talking about remakes of old games, I'm suspecting that a remake of Oni or Myth was on the table. And let me tell you, if you're remaking Myth, that is something that nobody at that studio has worked on unless you're bringing in people specifically with RTS experience. If you're remaking Oni, uh, again, that is a totally different style of game than what you've done. Um... You had potentially like six or seven projects going on at this studio. In addition, they also wanted to be a publishing house. At one point, that was something that was announced, um, that they were going to start publishing. And this was before the Sony purchase, obviously. I think this was like pre-COVID. Um, but God, what a disaster. Um, as to how we got here, uh, I, wa- I want to read, read a little bit more about this. Um, we've, we've covered a bunch of stuff that's in this article. Um I, uh, Jason Schreier says, I spoke to 10 current and former Bungie employees who asked not to be identified because they're not authorized to speak to the press. They described a company that grew too fast and tried to develop too many projects at once, spreading resources too thin rather than prioritizing chief moneymaker Destiny 2. I think we've all criticized this at this point. Um, I, I, for one, have been very critical of the decision to go and develop Marathon when you needed to fix Destiny first and pump those resources in. I kind of wonder why you didn't just like do that and like yeah, maybe you should have gone in on that mobile version. I don't know. Like, you need to do something to build this universe up a little bit more. Uh, Most people were critical of Chief Executive Officer Pete Parsons, saying he failed to take accountability for his own bad bets and that he'd been overly optimistic in his communication with the staff. Some said Parsons and other company leaders spoke of bungee magic. Just like I was talking about. Confident mantra similar to ones preached by other elite video game studios that they can make anything work out. See also the Bioware magic and Arcane magic. There are... uh, there are stories linked here about uh, about Anthem and Redfall. If you wanna, if you wanna know how that went, uh, Bungie first released Destiny in 2014 in partnership with Activision under a contract that called for the developer to release a new product every year, full games alternating with expansions. But the schedule was untenable for Bungie, which cut ties in Activision with Activision in 2019, largely so it could continue updating Destiny 2 rather than start from scratch with another sequel. Since then, Bungie has transformed Destiny 2 into a live service game, updating it with new content and regular expansions. This was a this I maintain for the health of the team this was a good idea 
realistically though and i i need i need folks to understand this as much as i don't like saying the words they're about to come out of my mouth beyond light pro beyond light or shadow keep probably needed to be i mean you could make an argument now looking back on it of course if shadow keep had been the beginning of destiny 3 that would have been a disaster i think if you had started destiny 3 with um beyond light which we've all kind of inferred was probably the plan I think you could have had such a healthier game. I'm going to be totally honest. Um, you could have had a healthier game. You could have started from the beginning with things you wanted to do. You basically made a new game anyways with, you know, updating subclasses and going into subclass 3.0 and doing stasis and all this and that. Like, you basically made a new game over time. It just took a couple of years to get there rather than doing it all, you know, in the background. Um... And imagine if you had had a game that had been healthy enough that you could take it up through the, you could have taken it from Beyond Light. So you would have had Beyond Light, you would have had the Witch Queen, you would have had Lightfall and the Final Shape. Okay. You would have had the seasons associated with those. And you would likely have what's coming this year and next year while you start work on the next game. I don't know if you would have continued holding this player base. But, but, at the point we were at when Beyond Light came out, sunsetting had already happened. They were already going to pull a bunch of content out of the game. What, outside of the raids and the strikes that they took out, what were we really missing? Like, what, what, were, we, what were we really going to have to kill ourselves to get again in terms of gear, you know? Yeah, 1K. Uh, I'll, I'll give you 1K. I'll give you anarchy, you know, I'll give you I'll give you raid exotics, but like outside of like raid exotics and like the wish ender, like what what were we really going to miss from that time that we didn't think was going to be carried over? Because a lot of the exotics I imagine would have just been available from the beginning in the next game. That would have been the way to do it for me, would just be make that shit available pretty much right away. Um or hey, if you unlocked it in the previous game, we're we're gonna let you do a one time carryover. I got one-time carryover would have been great. Just you don't get to carry over your legendary stuff, but your exotics, they carry over. Congratulations. You know, or, hey, all the exotic armor you had is automatically unlocked in the, in the new game. It's automatically unlocked. That's just going to be where we do our updates from now on. Something like that, I think, could have worked. I think now, post-Final Shape, there's too many years of stuff. There's too much stuff to carry over. And I think that's part of the problem that we ran into. And apparently they, they've started to feel the same way. Um, you know, the, the next the next one is talking about early 2022. Um, we, we already read that. Low interest rates, strong pro, pro, post-COVID sales. Uh, the Sony purchase happens uh, in early 2022. Approximately two years after they got out of the deal with Activision. The following year, as the industry's pandemic surge slackened, Bungie grappled with several problems. Lightfall failed to impress fans while Marathon, an extraction shooter game that was well in the development, struggled to coalesce. Meanwhile, the next Destiny 2 expansion called The Final Shape was also floundering and needed more time to come together. During one grim meeting in late 2023, Parsons told staff that the company had missed its revenue targets by 45% and was losing money. Bungie delayed The Final Shape and Marathon and subsequently laid off around 100 employees. Feeling pressure from a parent company seeking increased profitability and facing its own set of challenges, Bungie's executives charted a new course. Both Marathon and D2 received new leadership as Sony's video game unit replaced its CEO and laid off 900 people. Earlier this year, Sony Interactive chairman uh, Hiroki Todaki publicly criticized Bungie, saying he wanted to see more accountability. Employees were hopeful the extra time on the final shape would lead to a great product, and the expansion received rave reviews. But the critical claim had little impact on the deeper cuts that were already in the works at Bungie, as Steven Totillo reported on Gamefile on Thursday. Parsons acknowledged in a blog post announcing the layoffs this week that the company had grown too much. We were overly ambitious. Our financial safety margins were subsequently exceeded, and we began running in the red. And then, you know, that's then that you have the pay, you have the payback um, paragraphs there. What does this mean for the future of Destiny 2, though? Because I think that I think that's where we're at. I think that's where we're all a little like kind of concerned about, you know, what what could have been is, is over. And I think what could have been were some really awesome ideas. Just maybe you went after them a little too quickly. And I, I still don't understand how a mobile MOBA is making it out of all of this. But 
Um, the company plans to continue updating Destiny 2, although it will no longer pursue regularly paid expansions as it did in the past, according to people familiar. During one meeting, a company leader told attendees that sales of each expansion had declined year over year, including June's The Final Shape, so they would be moving away from an annual release model. Holy shit. <laughs> no more big expansions? Um, that sounds terrible. Um, yeah, question mark. This sounds awful. This sounds like a terrible idea. Some staff have said they're optimistic about the vision for Destiny 2 under new director Tyson Green, a Bungie veteran who took the helm earlier this year. We talked about this uh, earlier in the year, but Tyson is one of the guys who was behind uh, not only Halo 3's Forge uh, map builder, but also um, one of the minds behind exotic weaponry in Destiny 1. So... I feel pretty confident here, but uh, in the coming months, people said Bungie will look to retain and attract players with smaller scale content drops modeled after Into the Light, a well-received update in April that added a brand new mode to the game. Rather than selling this content, Bungie will aim to release it for free, along with overhauls to activities that it hopes will appeal to hardcore players. Other vague plans for the future include a storyline that will feature characters and worlds that Destiny has not yet explored. That I, I imagine this is Frontiers. I imagine that has to be Frontiers. Um, I just, man, I don't, I don't know how I feel about this. Like, if you're basically telling me we're gonna get like a couple of war mines a year, like, uh, our our friend Joe Asus uh, was joking in another Discord that I'm in with him that, uh, that get ready for Eater of Worlds too. And yeah, unironically, that kind of feels like where we're headed. You know, I said last night my dreams for Wrath of the Machine coming back are dead. They're dead in the water. It's never happened. Pete, sell the Datsun so we can uh, so we can get Wrath of the Machine back. Uh, fans have wondered if Bungie might one day start anew with Destiny 3, but such a project has not been in development, according to the people familiar. Bungie is instead looking to create a smoother onboarding process for Destiny 2, such as rebranding to attract new players who might be turned off by a game that can now feel impenetrable, those unfamiliar with its ample proper now. <laughs> oh, boy. Those left at Bungie will now have to make do with a smaller staff, tighter schedules, and a company that looks significantly different than it did three days ago. Long-term veterans Luke Smith and Mark Noseworthy exited this week, according to People Familiar, as did several other top leaders, leaving lingering questions about the future of decision-making at Bungie. Bungie staff who lost their jobs or receiving packages that include at least three months of severance and health benefits, said the People Familiar. But just like last year's layoff, anyone who received stock from the Sony purchase that is not yet vested will watch it disappear. This is fucking bullshit. This is this is such fucking bullshit. I uh, the people aspect of this is maybe the worst. Like not even maybe. It, it's definitely the worst. I two hundred and twenty people, man. Two hundred and twenty fucking people lost their jobs, lost their livelihoods over a poor decision making from an executive at the top. This does also confirm that they've moved the majority of the studio over to Marathon now and not Destiny. I don't think Destiny is in maintenance mode yet, but damn, it really feels like we're headed that way. Um, I wonder, I, want, I, I, I would kill to know how much of this was mandated by Sony and how much of this was just Pete going in and giving the axe. Because I have to think that Sony would really enjoy being able to say, hey... A remake of a single-player game from Bungie that most of you don't remember. Oni was a PlayStation 2 exclusive. It was a PlayStation 2 launch title, even. Imagine being able to come out and say, the classic is back. The cla the, the game is Oni, which was a PS2 launch game, is back. Even if they were able to get it up and running on PS Classics somehow would be a win here, I think, because then that's just, that's, that's pure profit for Sony. Like, Sony slaps their, they they slap PlayStation Studios on it, they sell a couple million copies of a remake. I can't imagine that would go over badly. Sorry, I needed a drink really quickly there. But I also can't imagine that Sony would want to say no to, like, mobile endeavors and I, I do suspect that's maybe why gummy bear still exists as that's been described as like a mobile moba type game um i wonder if that's why that's still existing but like again like i just can't i can't fathom like i know it says here in the story payback would have featured elements similar to warframe and genshin but to me that sounds more like monster hunter in a lot of ways and 
I would have died for a monster, a, de a Destiny monster hunter game. Um, man, I don't even know. I don't even know. I, I, I guess just to wrap this up, so I don't, I don't sit here and you know stammer and trip over my words too long and do a quick look of a uh, quick look on the internet and make sure that nothing else has broken. Um in the the past like 20 minutes which i'm really afraid that uh something is happening um man canceling a game two months ago though like jesus christ i don't okay like i'm just i'm still so i'm still so fixated on this i don't i don't get it i'm still i'm fixated on it i'm bothered by it I, nothing about this is good. And on top of that, on top of that, I know this is not, this is not exactly Destiny related, but another heartbreaking loss and closure for the games industry. GameStop today announced the death of Game Informer. Um, simply put, the, the reason I'm bringing this up, I'm, Corey and I are going to talk about it more on the next Xbox casuals and on the next Tower casuals, but we were not who we are without Game Informer. Um, this show doesn't exist without Game Informer. Um, that is where I got, that's where I developed my love of games. I'll never forget my first issue was the E3 2001 issue. Um, the big GameCube blowout. GameCube was the big story that year at, uh, at E3. And, uh, a, a little known game that would go on to be big. Halo Combat Evolved. Um, Halo was not the big Xbox story that year, believe it or not. That was actually a game that would not come out for another four years. Project Ego, a.k.a. what we all now know as Fable. Um, but that issue really was responsible for kickstarting uh, my love of video games. I can't tell you how many cover stories I remember reading. I remember pouring over uh, cover stories for Twilight Princess, for, uh, for Bioshock, for Elder Scrolls Oblivion, for Skyrim for fallout 3 for mass Effect, like i remember all of these so vividly halo halo 3 recon uh which later would be called odst you know i remember all of these so vividly and pouring over them for all the details on these games uh, i remember devil may cry when it got covered in there final fantasy 10 like it was it was this incredible time for games and I, I think that's where a lot of my love stems from. And it's just gone. It's gone just like that. You can't even look at the online uh, archives anymore because uh, GameStop's already yanked those down. But um, yeah, just uh, a quick soliloquy there. Um, I'm sure, you know, Corey and I are going to have a little bit more to share um, as we get uh, further into next week. Um, I... I, I'm doing one last check. I don't think there's anything else to talk about. God, I hope there's nothing else that has to come out. Um, because I am... I'm tired, guys. This has been a really long week. Um, I hate to be that person. This has been a very long week. And I'm not even the one who got... I'm not even somebody who got laid off. So... I'm... I'm really, really, really terrified of uh marathon right now it seems really feels like the future of bungie hinges on marathon and um man i just we we need to see i i i shouldn't be saying i have no faith in this game i just i don't know anyone who's excited for an extraction shooter i need to see gameplay we need to get some hands on with it but i just i, I have a really hard time seeing where we go where Bungie as a studio goes, where Destiny as a franchise goes at this point. I have a really, really hard time figuring that out. Um, that's something that's, we're going to have to unravel over the coming weeks and months. Um, you know, Dil Dylan is still saying on socials, you know, hey, we're going we're gonna to talk when we're ready. You know, basically, you know, him, uh, Josh Kuliski, uh, Kuliski, I believe is how you pronounce his last name, who's one of the uh, senior designers on the game, is like, hey, don't believe everything you read on the Internet. Um, you know, detail, we'll share details and things will come out when they need to come out. Um, that was before that, that was before the Bloomberg article. Um, so that may be referring to the Luke and Mark stuff. That may be referring to um, the things Jeff Grubb was talking about in Games Mess yesterday. I'm not really sure. 
Um, but a couple of people who are still at Bungie have basically said, you know, hold your horses. Like as long as, as long as we're still here, we're going to make banger content. And I believe that. Like if now, listen, saying that you want to model stuff like Into the Light, that's a great approach. I think that's a great approach. But that's stuff we've been asking for for a long time. Like that's stuff that should have been happening over the last couple of years, and it shouldn't have had to take this to press the big red button and panic. If you had done stuff like that, you probably could have gone to two years between expansions and built up that hype and given time for the story to be told properly and be told without rushing rather than whatever Lightfall was, you know, rather than what some of these seasons have been. You know, imagine if they had a little bit more time to cook on Lightfall and on, uh, let's say, Season of Defiance. Imagine how good those stories could have been. I'm so intrigued by the idea of why, why, like, you're putting humans in prison? Like, why is the Shadow Legion doing this for the Witness after the Witness has gone through a portal? Like, I would, I would love to hear stories about that. I would love things like, I, I would love to do things like that. I'm so happy we're back to Nessus, but it took us how long to get back here, you know? So long that Failsafe is making jokes about it. We basically haven't had story beats there since Kaido showed up. So, I, I, I don't know, man. I... I, I, have, I, have, I have problems with it. And I also understand, you know, Bungie's reluctance to do a Destiny 3. They don't want to piss off the player base and make us lose all our stuff again, but at the same time, it's kind of the only way you can ever hope to rebuild a player base. And it's also just, it's just so hard to break through like those seven or eight online games like it has destiny has an audience for better or worse this is what you've got and what you got to work with at this point this game it has plateaued in terms of players you're not going to increase players at this point i have a couple of friends who've said you know they would love to come play it but there is just too much to catch up on. They don't want to play through all these expansions. They don't, they're behind because, you know, weapon crafting and like the, you can't get the weapon patterns once the, once the year is gone. Well, you can, but it's very difficult to. And yeah, all th things like that are all barriers to entry. So you're going to have to overhaul that at some point too. I don't, I don't know. So. All right, um, I'm going to get out of here because I'm just I'm getting more and more upset. Uh, I'm just going to keep complaining about Bungie's decision making. But um, either way, thank you for listening. If you uh, if you're tuning into this, thank you for listening um, and letting me ramble for a little bit with you guys. Um, write in with it. Write in with your thoughts. You know, share share your thoughts in the in the podcast channel in the Discord. Um, we'll go through some of them next week. I uh, I'm interested to hear. Any other perspective folks might have um, that's maybe not doom and gloom like me. Um, if you're somewhat, if you're somehow still optimistic about the future of this game, I'd love to hear why. If you are optimistic about the future of Bungie, I'd love to hear why. And I promise it will not be ten minutes of me ripping your opinion apart. Um, because I mean, I I do still have some optimism, like, but I'm I'm losing that. Like the the stuff that sounded interesting to me is not happening. And scaling back on the expansions really is a bummer. Um, I saw somebody ask, the last thing I promise, um, Jason was replying to somebody earlier and said that, uh, they're like, well, how on earth are they going to monetize the game if things are free? And he was like, uh, through selling, you know, season passes and um, dungeon keys and stuff. So I would assume that means that, like, the episodes are going to stick around, but there's going to be free updates during them. Like, maybe that's why we're going to get all the story beats at one time going forward. I don't, I don't actually know, like... Again, we need we need to see a plan. We need to see a plan from Bungie. Um, and I'm hoping we get that here in the next couple of weeks. We traditionally get a showcase at the end of August, beginning of September. And uh, who knows if we're going to get one now? Um, because they're doing all these layoffs are coming five weeks before the 10th anniversary. But who knows what we're going to get at this point? And next year really seems like it's going to be the year of marathon. So we'll have to wait and see. But uh, again, thank you for listening. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, and yeah, I, we will, uh, we will see you guys on Thursday for another episode of, uh, Tower Casuals. Uh, take it easy and have a good weekend, everyone.